First of all, let me introduce local attorney, Mr. John Settle. Let's start with the lawsuit itself that you filed, I guess, last week, right? Have I got that right? Tell us about that. What's the point? What's the purpose? What's your goal? Well, I'm concerned that this school board is, is spending public dollars to uh, uh, notify parents of meetings uh, to explain the bond issue, but their explanation of the bond issue is not uh, completely accurate. Uh, and the school board is spending lots of money. They've given them a big pay raise and even a signing bonus to the, to the superintendent and now wants to spend $108 million. So the purpose is to uh, clarify whether or not they're spending public dollars correctly and notifying parents by robocalls and text. And then if the actual presentation at these community meetings is accurate as to the need for the bond issue. If you think that the public monies are being misappropriated or or misused, if you could just clarify for everybody, where precisely is that money coming off uh, being misspent? Well, I, I would question, number one, the recent uh, uh, pay raise to the superintendent, including even a $10,000 signing bonus. And then secondly, I mean, who's heard of a signing bonus for a school superintendent? And secondly, I don't believe that the uh, school resources uh, are that, that the studies that they're showing the need for the schools are correct, uh, and therefore that there's not a need to spend 108 million dollars uh, to build schools which are not actually needed. So public dollars are being uh, spent in a wild fashion by the Cattle Ferry School Board and trying to get more public dollars. How is what you refer to as the signing bonus, the salary increase for Superintendent Dr. Gorey, how does that specifically in your lawsuit, and maybe I'm not understanding, how does it's that not tie... It's not part of the lawsuit. It's not part of the lawsuit. Okay, then, the lawsuit. Then, then I guess my original question was, what monies are being I misspent question, in the promotion I, of Reinvest in Cato? Uh, I, I question that the monies are being... First of all, they're spending money on the... Um, notifying the parents with the robocalls, with text, and then the presentations themselves, I believe, are presenting inaccurate information that was evidently prepared by their staff to uh, justify a need for this bond issue. So if you're spending public monies in a fashion that is misrepresent making misrepresentation to the public, I don't believe that's appropriate. And when you say misrepresenting, can you give me a specific example? Well, uh, there's lots of information out there that uh, we have much less students than we've had in the past and that uh, we still have the same number of schools. And there's substantial question as to whether or not there's needs to build a new high school in, in southeast Shreveport. There's, there's a lot of information and questioning about uh, the fact that we have substantially less students and yet we seem to need more buildings uh, on the ground. Uh, I think that information is circulating out there, and questions have been asked that the school board uh, has not really answered in a fashion that's convincing or is actually uh, supported. Your lawsuit against Bossier Parish a couple of years ago was very similar. Is, is that accurate? Uh, it was a different uh, lawsuit, actually, because they were saying it was not a... They were saying uh, they were misrepresenting to the public the fact that it was not a uh, a tax increase, so that was more of how they were advertising that versus justifying the need for it. So it was it was somewhat similar. It really comes down to communications to the public, uh, as, and that suit was about whether or not it was actually a tax increase uh, or not. So it, it, it had some similarity. Yes, you want you, we want the public to know about these community meetings, right? So how would you propose the superintendent and the school board advertise these meetings? Well, I think I think it's fine. They you know. There's plenty of free press out there, just like what you have here. Uh, and it's not so much advertising as what they're actually telling them at, at the meetings as well as to whether or not it's a, an objective uh, representation of the needs for the bond issue. Excuse me, Mr. John, but it's, it's Dr. Gorey's plan. How, how is he supposed to go into these meetings and be unbiased about his own plan? Well, he's a public servant. Is his plan justified? And as it, it, it's my understanding, he allows no one to, to question any of his in his uh, his uh, uh, conclusions. So 
Uh, just because a highly paid public servant says he needs dollars, more dollars to spend, does not mean that it is a is uh, that that's a correct assumption or that uh, uh, the voters should agree to that. If there have been mandatory meetings at some schools, which we know there have been, where teachers were asked to support the bond issue, don't I'm not I'm just saying that's what I've been told by a couple of Rumor teachers. Has that, yes. I've been told that I'm sure you have too. Is that a violation of the law? Uh, I think it's pretty close. Uh, you know, they have a, a, a very active teachers union. It's, it's pretty close, uh, and uh, I, I decided to stay out of that particular issue because the, the teachers have an active union with Jackie Lansdale. Uh, I, I, if I were a teacher, I'd be worried that that the, if I didn't vote, not saying how, that I might have some repercussions because uh, it is public record if somebody votes. Now, how they vote is a different story, but I think it's, it's pushing the line pretty well, which, which uh, uh, to me is bothersome when you're pushing on public employees uh, to vote a certain way. So, Mr. John, I guess, uh, pretending to the lawsuit once again, what's the end game? What is it you want? Well, I'm I'm uh, hoping, and I, and the, I don't know that the suit will actually get heard before these community meetings end, but I was hoping that there would be some judicial determination is if this correct expenditure of public dollars to uh, have robocalls and text messages and, uh, for community meetings that did not allow uh, uh, serious questioning uh, about the bond issue and, in fact, if whether or not the facts were represented correct. What's the next date for the court hearing? Uh, what well, do you... it hadn't been set yet. Okay. Uh, I filed it. It has not been set yet, so uh, I don't know. John Settle, local attorney, we hope we can be in touch and uh, keep keep us posted on this. Yes, thank you all. Y'all have a good day. Thank you, sir. I had originally, you and I and your staff had agreed we would talk about testing this morning, but you have agreed to talk about some things that have been out there and have been flying around regarding the uh, the lawsuit filed by Mr. Settle against Caddo School Board. Uh, some strong-arm tactics have been thrown at you, at you, saying that you're strong-arming teachers to vote for it and support it, and I know you, you just told me off the air that you do want to respond. You feel like it's important that you respond to those accusations. Well, you know, I, I will certainly respond to anything that I can. Again, we do look forward to our uh, opportunity in court uh, to defend, of course, any actions that of anything that we've done. Uh, the advantage is that, you know, I built a lot of schools in my career coming from Mansfield ISD. Uh, we, you know, we built, a, you know, we opened six schools in one year. So I'm very familiar with the laws and, and how they govern what we can do. Uh, never, ever want to strong harm anyone into into doing anything. In fact, we've been very clear that um, the, the, we're doing information. Uh, we do encourage everyone to vote, and I think we as citizens, I mean, there are people that died for us to have the right to vote, so we certainly need to always encourage people to vote, but would certainly never tell anyone how to vote, because that's a personal decision. But we do think it's important that factual information is presented so that people can make an informed vote. The mandatory meeting at Timmins, there's information coming out of there that um, teachers felt threatened. Can you respond to that? I, I do not understand how teachers could feel threatened. Uh, we were as kind as we can be. Uh, again, you know, I pride myself on being a very kind person. I would never do anything that's threatening to a teacher. Uh, and again, I've been most accommodating to teachers and staff to when, in, in, the, in the respect of answering questions and providing information. I think, you know, one of the interesting things is that everyone says we need to right-size the district until it's at their school. Everyone says that we need to close buildings and ensure that we're operating a number of build buildings so that we can be as fiscally responsible until they're using that to their advantage for their cause. And again, we look forward to doing what's best for the 41,000 students of Caddo Parish each and every day, and we will stay within the letter of the law. Uh, again, I encourage anyone who wants to vote no to certainly take advantage of that right. And I encourage people that want to vote yes to take advantage of that right as well. But we are not going to strong arm anyone into doing anything. Dr. Gorey, were those teachers' meetings at various schools, were those mandatory meetings? Do you know? 
the meetings were fa- a part of faculty meetings, uh, mandatory? No. You could have said you did not want to be a part of that meeting. Now, there were other things. It was the, in, in these meetings, it's not the only thing on the agenda. So you would have just had to sit out for, that, for the, the part of the meeting where we're presenting the information. But as employees of the school district, you know, there are other meetings. There are other things like most of these meetings because of the time of the year had test security type items uh, on the agenda. And again, these are not strong arm meetings. It's factual information, the same thing that you would receive if you sat in the board meeting when we presented the original plan. I'm looking at a memo that went out uh, that said Tuesday, March 10th at 3.15, there will be a mandatory meeting of employees at Timmins for school for board personnel with board personnel. This meeting is for secretaries, custodial staff, cafeteria, teachers, etc. Um, it's signed by, I guess, maybe the principal? I had not, I'm not seen the, the the email that you're referring to, Aaron. Okay. But again, um, you know, as a part of the school day, the principals can have faculty meetings. And again, I assure you, anyone that if you do not want to attend the faculty meeting, there will there will be no retribution. That that will you will be allowed to miss that part of the meeting, and you you will simply then come in at the part of the meeting that. Um, the part of the meeting that's dealing with test security, whatever other business the school may have there. But please know there's been no communication from my office that the are from communication of the school district that the meetings were mandatory. Dr. Gorey, I can't thank you enough for being as open as you are. And, uh, and again, I, I, what I, I promise community. you, I promise you, I will continue to be open because all I want to do is what's best for the students of this school district. And the issue is that, you know, and, and it's normal that people have different uh, different impressions of what that looks like. But again, just know that I and I and I and I assume that everyone's intentions are well and we will end up with a good product at the end of the day.